Hey everyone, this is Kenji. Um, I'm about to cook lunch. It's gonna take me half an hour or so-ish. Um, I'm making three different dishes here. Um, I haven't really started anything, but we're doing a sort of Spanish and Catalan and kind of, I don't know, some random not Spanish or Catalan thing. We're gonna start with a Spanish dish, um, gambas al ajillo, which is a garlic shrimp. So I got frozen shrimp here. Okay, let me put these in a bowl. Generally when you get shrimp, um, frozen is totally fine. Almost all shrimp that you get have been uh, frozen at sea, um, which is fine. Um, what you want to do though is not get, don't get the pre-cooked shrimp, get raw frozen shrimp. Um, sorry, that's frozen at sea if they're wild, if they're farm raised, of course they were frozen at the farm. But um, what you want to do is get raw shrimp, not, not pre-cooked, because usually pre-cooked means pre-overcooked, um, and you certainly don't want that. Um, you also want to try and get shrimp that are sort of relatively minimally processed so the completely shelled ones tend to be kind of a little mangled i find um however um the completely shell on ones um i find to be a little bit of pain, a little bit of a pain in the butt so what i go for is this kind which is easy peel so those are shell, shrimp that still have the tail um, and the shell attached but they've been split down the back so it makes the peels come off very easily um it's also nice to have the peels there uh, let's get a little piece of chili. It's nice to have the peels there, um, the shells there, because um, you can use them to add flavor to your dishes, which is what we're gonna do. Um, so normally this ch dish will be made with a um, guindilla pepper. I'm gonna use a, um, a chili, uh, it's a California chili, I think. Um, that's because that's what I have. You could use, um, a, you can use a, you know, really, honestly, any dried chili you have, it'll just make the flavor a little bit different. Um, you can use guindilla, you can use guajillo, you can use um, heaven-facing peppers, uh, which are spicier. <clears throat> uh, I'm going with California. Uh, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna do some broccolini, which I got here. Broccolini, a little bunch of broccolini. And that I'm gonna fry with some, yeah, let's, do, let's do a little bit of a serrano chili and with the broccolini too, just for the, just for the heck of it. <clears throat> And what else do we need? We need some parsley. We got a little bunch of parsley here, I know that. A little parsley. And let's grab some uh, chorizo. This is the dry, um, raw, dry cured Spanish style chorizo. So it's like a, um, so it's different from Mexican chorizo, which is a sort of wet. Um, raw sausage, whereas um, this is a dry cured, um, a dry cured sausage. Uh, so it's more similar to like a salami, and it's flavored with garlic and smoked paprika. Oh, finally found my bread knife. There it is. All right, so we're just gonna let's cut this guy into like some nice little, nice big chunks like this. Okay, I'm gonna take this broccolini. Um, so broccolini, broccoli, green vegetables, if you're going to saute them, I typically will uh, either blanch, blanch them first, that's uh, cook them in boiling water, um, but today I'm going to go the quick and dirty route, and I'm just going to microwave them. So give them a little splash of water. Microwaving actually is a very effective way to blanch green vegetables um, prior to sauteing. Uh, microwaves work by... Um, well, they send out microwaves, uh, and what they do is they cause dipoles. Um, the water, water is a dipole. That means it has one charge. You know, it has a charge across it. Um, so what it does is, it, as the waves go through, it causes water molecules to basically flip upside up and down really rapidly, um, and that creates friction, which creates heat. So things that have a lot of, um, let's say, 90 seconds here, things that are high in water, um, and vegetables are, you know, anywhere from like 70% to 90% water. Um, things that have a lot of water in them will. Um, <clears throat> do really well in the microwave. I'll grab a couple pans, I'll grab this for the shrimp, the shrompers. We've been doing this thing in my family since my daughter was, daughter was a little baby. We've been trying to teach her that shrimp are called shrompers. And so she calls them shrompers now, which I really like. Um, she also calls peanuts goobers and she calls hazelnuts filberts. I don't know. Do you guys do experiments on your kids like that? All right, so copper pan, Gonna get it lightly, lightly preheating, just so that it's ready to go. Good amount of olive oil. This is gonna be for our shrimp. So that's maybe, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. 
<clears throat> and let's see, let's get the tree still going in this, uh, let's go in this walk here. Also just a touch of olive oil. And now we're gonna go with garlic, lots of garlic in all these dishes. So what are we doing? So we're doing gambas al ajillo, which is a Spanish dish. We're doing um, pan tomaquet, or pan con tomate in Spanish, or bread with tomato in English, um, which is a uh, Catalan dish. I think the other day I re referred to it as Catalonian, which is not actually a word. Um, Catalonia is the region. Catalan means from Catalonia. Um, saying Catalonian would sort of be like saying, I don't know, hamburgers are Americanian, which they aren't, they're American. <clears throat> Bunch of garlic here. Should we try that magic garlic peeling method? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I'll show it to you. It depends on how old the garlic is and how, um, like older garlic tends to work better because um, the skin, skins are drier. But here's that, here's the magic garlic trick. You take your garlic, put it in a thing like this, and I guarantee this is almost certainly not gonna work because I know this garlic is probably too young, but then you put it in between two bowls and you just, Shake the crap out of it. Let's see what happens. Is our garlic peeled? Oh wow, look, worked. Peeled garlic. Mostly worked. Didn't work for all of it. It's also not like significantly faster than just peeling it yourself, you know. Oh, it's getting a little too hot. I want that to actually render nice and slow, not not go crazy like that. Yeah, I know this is really fussy garlic I've been getting recently. Um, people sometimes ask, is it okay to use pre-peeled garlic? Or is it okay to use pre-minced garlic or garlic purees? Um, pre-peeled garlic is all right for some things. Um, you know, generally the way it, when pre-peeled garlic, garlic, what they do is they take garlic cloves, they blanch them, um, and they peel them with a machine. Um, and they're okay. The flavor can be a little bit sort of more pungent than real fresh garlic that you're peeling yourself. Um, it's, you know, it's all right. It's all right for some dishes, particularly things where you're going to be cooking it. Um, it's generally fine. But for dishes where, you know, garlic is really the main flavor um, or where you're going to be using the garlic raw, so like in something like a vinaigrette, for a salad dressing, I wouldn't use uh, pre-peeled garlic, um, or in, in dishes like these, or like this, uh, garlic shrimp, where you know garlic is sort of like equally, an equal star with the shrimp, um, I would not use pre-peeled garlic for that. Just peel it yourself. Um, and as for like pre-minced garlic, I would never use it. I mean, you know, if you use it and you don't mind the flavor of it, um, and you've been using it for a long time and you're okay with it, you know, keep doing it. I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to stop you, but um, I would personally never use um, pre-chopped garlic. It usually doesn't really taste like anything. Um, it also had, like has a kind of I don't know. It just it has like an off. It does. It, it doesn't taste like garlic to me, first of all, and it has a kind of weird off flavor that I don't like. Um, but again, you know, that's just me. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stop you from doing it. All right, shrimpers are getting going there. Um, these are, I think, 30 to 40 count shrimp. Um, so 31, 40, that means that per pound of shrimp, there are 31 to 40 uh, shrimp. So those would be considered sort of large, although the numbering systems are somewhat arbitrary. Give it one more fresh bit of water. Um, when you get really big, you'll start seeing these the numbers that say U on them. So it'll be like U10, which means that there are under 10 shrimp per pound. That means they're real big shrimp. Each one's, you know, a couple of ounce and a half, couple ounces. Um, all right, so for our garlic shrimp, all right, this guy's gone. For garlic shrimp, we're gonna put that chili in there. I'm gonna take a couple of, couple of cloves of this garlic. I'm gonna smash them. Let's do some of the smaller ones. Actually, I'll smash quite a few of them because I'm gonna put 
Some of these I'm gonna chop up and marinate the shrimp in, and then some of them I'm gonna put straight into the, uh, the oil to infuse. So my method, I use, um, I, I put garlic in in three sort of distinct phases. So whole, slightly smashed cloves in the oil at the start to start it uh, kinda um, <clears throat> flavoring that oil. Then I'm gonna chop some garlic. And this garlic is gonna go in with the shrimp, the shrompers, while they're marinating. In fact, we can get that. We'll use this bowl to marinate the shrimp. Let's see what the broccoli's doing. All right, broccoli is blanched. And it's ready to saute. <clears throat> Marinade for the shrimp is going to be garlic. This is going to be some of the good olive oil. Um, the, you know, they're both extra virgins. This is like the super fancy stuff, and this is the kind of, I think this is the Costco stuff now. Um, the Costco stuff is what I'm going to infuse with oil at the start. Um, I'm going to be heating it, so you're going to lose a lot of those sort of like really fresh flavors anyway. So I'm saving the fancy stuff for things that are going to be added more closer to the end of cooking. So the marinade on the shrimp, and then I'll do a little splash of fresh olive oil at the very end also. Um, oh, so we got that going. Let's get a bay leaf in there also. Woo! Watch out, Shabu. I keep my bay leaves in the freezer. Turkish bay. Alright. Now we're going to start on our Catalan dish, pan tomaquette. So, get some good bread. This is not, you know, the right kind of Spanish bread that I would use, but this is from a Bach House, my friend's bakery. Um, this is a sourdough, naturally leavened sourdough. It's really good stuff. Um, the bakery's in San Mateo, in case you're interested. If you're local, they are still open right now. Um, downtown San Mateo on Third Avenue, um, or when the farmer's markets are operating, they're up at the College of San Mateo Farmer's Market on Saturdays. Um, they do amazing sourdough bread, natural oven sourdough breads. Um, they do um, a couple of German style things. They have this really great um, seeded, seeded rye bread, a heavy seeded rye bread um, that's made with kind of like a rye porridge. Um, and then they do, a, of course, a ton of pastries as well, really excellent pastries. Um, so I'm gonna toast this up in my toaster oven. I wanna get it nice and dark. I'm gonna go with a seven here. Nice and dark and you know, lightly charred. We're going for, let's turn this off for now. How are our shrimp doing? Okay, our shrimp are basically thawed. So when you buy shrimp, again, by the way, um, <clears throat> you wanna get the ones that are relatively minimally processed. Um, having the shell on is fine, um, as long as they're easy peel, that's what I usually get. Um, take the shell off by peeling, pinching the tail at the bottom like that, and then the rest comes right off. <clears throat> Let's get them into the marinade. So, yeah, let me show you again. So you grab the tail here, you pinch and pull, and then you can just peel the rest right off like that. Um, sometimes people ask whether shell on or live shrimp are better. Um, uh, sorry, head on or live shrimp are better. Head on shrimp are okay, are excellent in fact, so long as you can get the shrimp while they're still alive. So, um, you know, if you live on a coast uh, near where there's a, f a shrimp fishery and you can get those shrimp sh um, with the heads on and they're still alive, like literally alive and kicking, um, that's good. If, however, um, the shrimp have been frozen or if they've been dead for a while, um, the problem is, that, and this is true for both shrimp and lobster, um, the problem is that there's an enzyme uh, in the head that once the animal dies, um, the enzyme starts breaking down the meat um, and so what you end up with is flesh, is, it, it spreads down from the head and works down the body and it goes pretty quickly, you know, in a matter of hours, the flesh starts to get really soft and mushy. So if you've ever had like a really mushy shrimp with the head on, um, that is probably why it's probably because the, the shrimp was dead for too long. Um, and it's why generally when you buy lobsters, you buy them either, uh, just the frozen tail or you'll buy the whole thing with the head on while it's still alive, but you'll very rarely see, in fact, I don't think I've ever seen a whole frozen lobster with the head on, uh, and that's because the enzyme starts to break down the meat once it's dead. 
um, and it has to be dead before you freeze it. Well, it, it dies, I guess, in the process of freezing at least. Um, and as it thaws, it'll start to it'll start to get mushy. So, shrimp with the head on are excellent if you can find them live. Um, avoid them if you can't. They'll actually be worse than frozen shrimp. All right, got these guys going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shells. Now these shell, one of the other reasons why you want shell shell on shrimp as opposed to completely deshelled, aside from having shrimp that don't look completely mangled, is that there's a lot of flavor left in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze out some excess moisture. And this is going to go straight into the oil with the garlic and that chili. I want to turn up the heat a little bit. All right, how much time have we has elapsed? 15 minutes. Oh, easy. We're going to be we're going to be done in like 25 minutes, I think. I think. I don't know. We'll see. Quick and easy meal. All right, so the rest of this, uh, let me clean up my board a tiny bit. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some salt to here. Good pinch of salt. And we're going to add a little touch of baking soda. This is actually a trick. Oops, a little bit too much. You want to go with about a quarter teaspoon. That was more like a half. Let me get some out of there. About a quarter teaspoon for um, 12 ounces to a pound of shrimp. Um, this is a trick you get from, I got from Chinese cooking, um, where, where shrimp are frequently uh, marinated with a little baking soda. Um, in fact, other meats as well. Um, but shrimp in particular, like if you're going to put shrimp into um, a dumpling, you would marinate it with salt and baking soda. Um, and what it does is it actually causes the skin, uh, sorry, the flesh to firm up a little bit. So it gives it a sort of lightly crunchy texture and it also retains moisture a lot better. So when you cook the shrimp, they'll come out plumper. Um, they'll have a nice sort of crisp texture, like a crisp bite to them instead of being mushy. Um, and they'll be juicier. So it, it, baking, baking soda, I marinate my shrimp. Anytime I'm cooking shrimp, in fact, I add a little bit of baking soda to the marinade. All right, now let's chop our garlic. We're going to go with uh, slices that, you don't want slices that are too thin here. So relatively, um, relatively thick, you know, like maybe a uh, twelfth of an inch, two millimeters. Um, so not like paper thin, um, you want, because if you do them paper thin, what happens is when you start to fry them in the oil, they, uh, they end up burning before the shrimp is ready, um, or before they've really been able to give a lot of their, of their flavor. What I like to do, what I like to do is relatively thick, um, relatively thick slices so that they stay nice and tender, um, while still giving flavor, um, and they can brown a little bit on the out, bit on the outside without, um, you know, turning bitter and black and gross on the inside. All right, let's get our, let's get our parsley ready. This has already been washed earlier in the week. And let's get some landing plates for everything. We'll do our, we'll do our shroppers in here. The broccoli can go right back in there. And then for our for our bread, let's use this. Let's use this pretty board. So, uh, pam tomaquet, bread, toasted bread with uh, olive oil and tomato. Bread's almost ready, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. Okay, so you see the uh, garlic is starting to get golden here, and the shrimp shells are turning this kind of ruby red. Um, that's good. Um, so we're, this this is now all basically infusing that oil with flavor. Um, that's going to make its way into the final, into the final dish. Get a strainer here. All right, and our tomatoes now. So these are ripe tomatoes. Um, this is what we're going to use for our tomato bread. Nice dark toast on that. Um, I'm going to grab one more clove of garlic. Very traditionally, you don't necessarily have to put garlic on on the uh, bread. It would just be tomato and olive oil, but I like the flavor of garlic on, on this. So I'm going to take a piece of garlic, peel it. Whew. 
garlic is not very, not very appealing. All right. It's that time of the year when garlic gets really tough to peel. All right, rub it all over the surface. Use it kind of like a rasp, like a, like a grater. Bread on garlic, what could be greater? The bread could be the greater. greater. All right. Put the garlic on there. I'll just throw the rest of this in here. Oh, no, I'll throw the rest of it under the stove. All right, now, let me grab my pan here. Push out on here to extract as much as possible. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna rescue that chili. I'll use them again. I'll put them back. I like having the chili in the finished dish. All right, get out some of that oil. Well, as much as we can of that oil. And there we go. Now we got a nice, beautiful garlic and shrimp flavored oil to start our dish with. So this goes back in here. You see how it's got that little bit of like a golden, golden and reddish color. Okay, so for our tomato bread, um, very traditionally what you would do is you would take your tomato, you'd split it in half, you wanna split it in half this way so that all the chambers are revealed and all the seeds can come out. Um, so, so that's this way orbitally, not, not through the stem like that, okay? Um, here, let's get some of this garlic going in there, first of all. All right, so we're gonna let this all of, this garlic sizzle just a bit until it's very pale golden brown. Get it on the single ear. All right. So, typically you would take your you would take your bread and your tomato, and all you got to do is rub the bread on the tomato the tomato on the bread like this. That is the sort of traditional Catalan way of doing it. Um, I like to go sort of a little extra step with this. Um, I, I used to work. Um, at a restaurant called Toro in Boston. Actually, there's one in New York now as well with um, my old chef, Ken Oranger. Um, and there we did um, our, our garlic, our Spanish, uh, sorry, our Catalan tomato bread um, by grating the tomato on a box grater like this, which I really actually like. So you take the tomato, grate it on a box grater. Um, if you saw my um, Menemen video, uh, you would have seen this technique already. Essentially what happens is the tomato skin becomes kind of like a safety glove for you, so you can really rub down and get all that flesh out. All right, we got tomato flesh. Now we get our bench scraper. I'm gonna put this right on top here. So it's sort of extra tomato-y tomato bread. We got the tomato rubbed in there and we got the tomato piled on top. Delicious. And what's our time at now? 23 minutes, all right, let me get the, let's take this tree saw for a second. All right, there we go. So the garlic's just starting to get a little golden around the edges, and that's what we're looking for. Now the shrimp can go right in, if I can find them, here they go. Shrimp go right in. Moderate heat, not too hot. You don't wanna, we're not searing the shrimp. We're kind of almost gently poaching them in this garlic oil, okay? So moderate heat like that. This guy can go back in. Let's get this, this pan hot for the broccoli. Oh, final thing, final steps on this bread. We're gonna take the good olive oil. Healthy drizzle on top. 
take some salt. Uh, let's use this red guy. Honestly, as long as it's big and flaky, all salt, salt basically, you know, the main difference in salt is texture, not flavor. Um, that's a nice red flaky, uh, chunky sea salt. All right, we got our thing going for the broccoli. Broccoli in. Let's get that garlic in there too. Some garlic in. Oh, let's get some chili in there too. And chili in. Season some salt. Give the shrimp a few tosses. Chorizo back. Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. That's that chili. That's that chili making me sneeze. All right, shrimp are pretty much done. I'm gonna hit them with a little sherry. You can use sherry or sherry vinegar. I just got some dry sherry here. A couple tablespoons. Um, if you want, you can also add, you know, some uh, paprika to there. You could add a little tomato paste. It's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty blank canvas. You can do much of what you want there. Um, you also don't have to use parsley. You could use something like thyme, fresh thyme. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going very sort of traditional here. Um, so thyme, I'm uh, sorry, parsley, sherry, olive oil, chilies, bay leaf, garlic, and shrompers. Taste it. Where are we at on time? 27 minutes. Use a little bit of, a little bit more salt and then some of that, the fancy olive oil at the end. Just a little drizzle. Last little finishing touch here. Got some lemon. Create some zest over there just for, not for acidity, but for um, aroma. Uh, lemon zest is a great way to add sort of lemon flavor without adding the acidity of lemon. Um, you know, not that acidity would particularly hurt this. In fact, you know what acidity would be good on? Is this guy. All right. And there we are. Beautiful, beautiful Spanish and Catalan 30 minute meal. I got 40 seconds to taste this now. Mmm. So it gets that crunchiness, that texture um, from the baking soda. So good. All right, Chubby, you want a little, little chunk of chorizo? Here you go, here you go, sit. Foot taps, tap, tap, tap. Good girl. All right, you see this? You see all this?
Of course, we're going to need some extra bread for sopping up that shrimpy, garlicky oil there. Mmm. Love it. All right. See you guys later.